now we are going to start our uh, talk. Uh, today I am going to speak on uh, how uh, to remove resentment. This is a big problem uh, that people encounter every day in their meditation. Not only in meditation, but in other times as well. So, Buddha has given various methods. Out of them, I take only five of them. Then, uh, resentment or anger arises. One should use one or all of these methods to get rid of their resentment. Uh, that is, can you hear me? Yes, Pante. Yes, Pante. Okay. Yes, Pante. Okay, you can hear me. Okay. Uh, when one uh, has resentment, one should develop uh, living friendliness, that is metta. Uh, for the person, uh, one resents. When you resents a, per resents a person, he must practice metta towards that person. Even if it uh, plays situation inanimate object like weather, uh, heat, and so forth at that time, when you practice metta, you will be peaceful and your resentment will fade away. If you keep your teeth grinding when the situation arises, and increase your head, you will not be able to practice your meditation. And therefore, you have to practice metta. We all start our meditation every time we meditate together, or when we meditate alone, we start your meditation with metta. It is possible during your meditation that uh, resentment can arise. At that time, if you start your meditation with metta, at that time metta will be dominating factor in the in mind, not subordinate factor. And then your resentment will fade away. Second method is Compassion and have compassion for the person whom you resent. You resent because of certain things that person has done to you, the way the person behaves, the person speaks to you, and uh, so forth. Resentment can arise. When you practice kar karuna, uh, compassion, you can understand your compassion. That this person may have his own problem. He may not be in good health. He may have some family problems. He might have lost his job. Uh, he must have lost his relatives. And he has some uh, other mental and physical uh, problems. Therefore, the person may be, may be behaving like this in thoughts, words, and deeds. When you practice karuna, compassion towards that person, you will feel comfortable, happy, and your resentment will fade away. 
fourth method is third method is practice equanimity. When you have uh, resentment towards someone, practice equanimity. Now remember in this practice, put the skipped appreciate your joy. He skipped. He did not mention that. Why is that? Appreciate your joy you practice when you see somebody is happy, somebody is successful, mm. somebody is uh, uh, peaceful, and then you like, you appreciate it. But when you resent somebody, at that time, what would you appreciate? You cannot appreciate his behavior. You cannot appreciate what he says, what he does, how he behaves. You cannot appreciate that. Therefore, Buddha skipped that. Out of four Brahmaviharas, four sublime practices, he mentioned metta, karuna. And then upekka. Upekka means equanimity. Of course, when somebody is uh, behaving in thoughts, words, deeds, in an, uh, in an unacceptable way, impolite way, way that irritates others, that time we can practice upekka, equanimity. Equanimity practice help you to reduce your resentment. Then, if your resentment still continues, then you try to uh, ignore the person. Don't think about him. You ignore him. Ignore his, uh, him completely. Whether his thoughts, words, deeds are good or bad, you simply ignore the person. When you ignore it, you will be in peace. And you will not have resentment towards the person. And then, in this series, Buddha said that uh, if you practice the idea of ownership of karma, when you resent somebody, when somebody is not uh, agreeable to you, instead of developing resentment, even if, if resentment arises in you, uh, think, this person behaves this way because of that person's karma. It is uh, karma that makes him think this way, talk this way, and uh, behave like this, because he is his own karma. He cannot do better. He does not know better. Uh, and sometimes uh, when uh, certain beings is uh, addict to drugs, drinks, sex, various things, they are addicted. So we have to think, well, what can we do? This is his karma. He commit this, his, this uh, karma, so he behave like this. If he has committed good karma in the past, he would not behave like this. His behavior would have, would, would have been much better. So we can uh, excuse the person thinking that as it is karma, you cannot alter his karma, you cannot change his karma or her karma, and they are the owners of their karma, heir to their karma, inheritance of their karma, and karma there is their relatives, karma is their friend, so they associate with that karma and behave in that way. So he, you cannot do anything about it. So these are the 
ways that you have to change, use to overcome uh, your resentment. Uh, so now there is another way of uh, overcoming resentment. That is, suppose uh, somebody's bodily behavior is impure, but his verbal behavior is pure. His bodily behavior is impure, rotten, ugly, but his verbal behavior is good. That means even though he has a very bad, unwholesome bodily behavior, he speaks very friendly way, soft way, gentle way. Sometimes he speaks even the truth. So his speech is good. But his actions or physical actions does not uh, tally, agree with his speech. And yet, think of his uh, uh, forget his bodily impure behavior, think of his good verbal behavior. And we must give credit to that. At least he has good verbal behavior. And that way you will be able to overcome your resentment towards that person. This instructions is given only for living beings, not for inanimate objects. Most of the time we have resentment towards a person. And therefore this advice is given especially for uh, de dealing with uh, resentment towards a person. So this is one way of uh, calming yourself and getting rid of your resentment. Other way is, suppose you meet a person whose verbal behavior is bad, impure. He speaks dirty words, ugly words, un filthy words, unacceptable words. You know, sometimes uh, I even I have heard some people, according to their education, upbringing, in environment they brought up, and so forth. In every five words, they utter a dirty word, ugly word. You can hear that. When you listen to some people's conversations, every five words they throw, dirty word, ugly word, unacceptable word, dirty word, unacceptable. So, but his uh, bodily behavior is good. <laughs> bodily behavior is good. He likes to help people. Uh, for instance, uh, you are on the road, your car is uh, got stuck. It doesn't work. You get out and open the uh, uh, bonnet and try to meddle with the engine, and you cannot do anything. So somebody else sees his say, um, auto mechanics. He sees you struggling, struggling to fix your car. So he comes to you and says, you fool, don't meddle with it. Get out. I can help you. <laughs> so he can help you. But his word is so ugly. He said, you fool. <laughs> you are stupid. Don't try to me. Don't heal yourself. Let me help you. <laughs> so he helps you. <laughs> so like that, uh, then you have to be very... Uh, you shouldn't have any resentment towards him because even though his words are ugly, he do, he helps you and fixed your car and let you drive easily. 
like this. Some people are huh? like that. Uh, verbal behavior is bad. Bodily behavior is unpleasant, ugly. Then <laughs> some people's bodily behavior is bad. Mental behavior, verbal behavior is bad. Both bodily behavior is bad, unpleasant. Verbal behavior is bad, unpleasant. But periodically, from time to time, he opens his mind for good things, for placidity of mind. Open for advice, open for guidance, open for learning Dhamma, even though his both bodily behavior and verbal behavior are very, very bad. And yet, occasionally, he agree to listen to Dhamma, to listen to advice, and talk uh, uh, listen to friendly talks and then and that is enough for you forget about bodily behavior forget about verbal behavior and try to get into him through his mental opening 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 for good things that is another very wonderful way of uh, getting rid of your resentment. At that moment, you feel very comfortable. And then, there may be a person <coughs> whose bodily behavior and verbal behavior are impure and also does not open his mind for any advice, doesn't open for good dhamma at all. <clears throat> now, a almost rotten body behavior is bad, verbal behavior is bad, not even open, op doesn't open his mind uh, for good advice, for learning dhamma is uh, totally rotten. Uh, like Devadatta. He was so bad, Buddha said, suppose Buddha gave a very, very strong uh, simile, powerful simile. He said somebody is uh, drop into a cesspool, excrement, and he, when he fell into that, uh, this dirt is all about, even above his head. When somebody is trying to pick him up, there is not even, <laughs> not even very tiny little pure place as little as the tip of a needle, completely covered with dirt. So he cannot, you know, there's no part of his body to touch and pick him up. Like that when somebody's bodily behavior is bad, verbal behavior is bad, and doesn't op does not open his mind for any good things, and still you practice resentment. You, pra, pra, you, you, you don't resent the person, get rid of your resentment. Because he is so rotten that uh, he seems to be helpless, but you should not have resentment towards him. You should have compassion for him. You should have metta for him. 
you should uh, think how wonderful if this person finds some help, cure, medical treatment, and uh, hospitalizing, uh, some way of uh, helping him. So he think that way about this person. So the, uh, then there are beautiful similes given to illustrate this. Suppose <coughs> somebody is, you take the first one. First one is uh, bodily behavior is pure, but uh, verbal behavior is pure. That person, you have a hope in helping that person. So the simile to illustrate the situation of this person is like this. Suppose there is a monk who wear ragged robe. That means robe made up of rags, pieces of dirty cloth. Uh, when he was walk is walking, he sees a piece of cloth on the road. It has been muddy, dirty. People have stepped on it, and we can might have run on it, and so forth and so on. Very dirty. So <clears throat> this monk uh, first. Uh, kick it with his uh, right foot. He kick it to see whether something that he can use. Then he find this piece of cloth. So he with the we press the foot, uh, left foot on the piece of cloth, step on the piece of cloth, and with the right foot he kick it again and try to remove the mud, dirt, and then gingerly he picks it up with uh, unpleasant feeling he picks it up and take it with him and wash it. Then he finds that there is a little part of it that he can use. Other parts he cuts off, remove, and little part that he can use, he keep it. And he find more pieces of clothes, dirt, rags on the road, and collect them and make a rope out of that. Similarly, <clears throat> uh, when a person's bodily behavior is impure, but verbal behavior is pure, uh, so, then he should think is an occasion for him to practice metta. Even though appearance is dirty, but inside that piece of cloth there is something that you can use. So, it therefore this is the example for the first type of person that I mentioned earlier. Second is uh, somebody is, is uh, uh, bodily behavior is pure, verbal behavior is impure. Uh, so Verbal behavior is impure, but his bodily behavior is pure. It is just like, suppose, there is a pond, uh, pond covered with algae and water plants, covered the surface with algae and water plants. And might a man might arrive there, um, afflicted, oppressed by the heat, weary, 
durch die enttäuscht. Dennis hieß dies Pond mit LG and Water Plunge. Er covered with LG and Water Plunge. Then he uh, get into plunge into the pond and uh, sweep away, remove the algae and water plants with his hands. Then find the clear water there. And then he drinks it uh, using his, making his hand uh, like a cup his hand, like this, and then drink. Similarly, when somebody's uh, bodily behavior is uh, good, verbal be bad, verbal behavior is good, he can practice metta towards him, should have resentment towards him. Thirdly, he finds uh, somebody whose bodily behavior and verbal behavior are impure, but occasionally he has opening in his mind for listening to Dhamma, listening to good advice. This is the third person. Now this person looks, is like, like this. Suppose when you walk on the road, you are again uh, uh, he, beaten by heat, uh, you are uh, weary, thirsty, and parched, and you are very tired. But you are desperately looking for water. There is no water around. But you see, one place where there is a cow's footprint. Cow's footprint is not very deep, but that cow's footprint is filled with water. That may not be pure, clean, but when you are desperate for water, you want to drink that water. When you want to drink that water, if you Use your hand, cup your hand and try to get water. You disturb the water and it, it, uh, stir up the mud, dirt. And if you use a big leaf and make it a little into cup and try to get water from that, again, you will disturb the mud, stir the mud, and you cannot drink. Then, What you would you do in this puddle? You would uh, uh, you would think, let me get down on my all fours, like a cow, and uh, sip this water by my by my my by my mouth and directly I can drink this water without disturb, without uh, stirring it and making it dirty with the mud. So he kneeled down, goes on his paws, legs, hands and then he drinks this water to quench his thirst because he is so desperate. Similarly, when somebody's bodily behavior is bad, verbal behavior is bad, does not open his uh, mind for listening to Dhamma, then he looks like this. That is the third person. Fourth person is worse. Fourth person is his uh, bodily behavior is bad, verbal behavior is bad, 
does not gain an opening the mind for Dhamma and it is completely, as I mentioned, like Devadatta, completely covered with impurities. Body, verb, and mind, because mind does not open for good things. Uh, so all these three parts of his personality, body, speech, and mind, all filled with unpleasantness. He is very much like a very, very sick person. This, a sick person, you know, travel, you see a sick person in a desert. One will, any village uh, behind is too far behind. There may be another village too far ahead, even though there were villages, but one is too far behind, other is too far in front, you cannot reach. And you see this person sick, afflicted. Anytime he can die, he's so. Uh, so what you do? Th you think uh, there is no suitable medicine, nobody to help him. So <clears throat> you, while traveling on the set, you see. Then you may think, oh, may this man obtain suitable food, suitable medicine, and a qualified attendant, not any attendant, qualified attendant. Attendant also has to say, have a certain qualification. Otherwise, he will make things worse. So qualified attendance, and uh, may he get to meet the leader of the village district because so that this man does not encounter calamity and disaster right here. So when resentment arises against someone who is totally, completely, hopelessly bad, still you can develop here four Brahma Vyara, three Brahma Vyaras, Metta, Karuna, Upeka. These three Brahma Vyaras. Don't try to cultivate Mudita at that time because you cannot, there is nothing to, in, in the person, nothing to appreciate. Therefore, don't try to practice mudita. So, that is how you practice uh, this instruction in order to overcome resentment. And the fifth person, as I said, his bodily behavior is good, verbal behavior is good, his mind is open for anything, for any dhamma part any good advice, and he is like a, a person uh, is in good health. It is just like, suppose they have a, a pond with clear seat, cool water, clean with smooth banks, and delightful places, and a place shared various, with various trees, then a man might arrive uh, afflicted and oppressed with heat, weary, thirsty, and uh, parched. So he plunged into that pool. He would bathe and drink. Then after coming out, he would sit or lie down in the shade of a tree. So too, when a person bodily behavior, verbal behavior, pure, from time to time his mind is clear, 
opening for the routine. On that occasion, one should attend to his peer bodily behavior and uh, practice metta. That is the time you should not arouse your uh, jealousy. Don't become jealous of that person. That is the time you practice mudita. That is the time you practice metta, karuna, mudita, upekha. All the four brahmayaras. And there will not be any room in your mind to arouse your jealousy. Jealousy is another part of resentment, anger. See, this is a very wonderful advice the Buddha gave. Part of it is when the Sariputta's advice. The first part is the Buddha's advice. And elaborating on this, when the Sariputta gave the second set of advice. So, friends, that may be enough for today's talk. And we like to... <coughs> spend the rest of the time meditating. Okay. Now. Okay. <coughs> May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness. Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred to resentment. Whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely doing here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and end out with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes near again to birth in the womb. <coughs> with this metta thought, let us practice meditation until I ring the bell. Okay, let me... Ring the bell for you to start meditation. Okay? <coughs> okay.
by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. <coughs> may the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be, from the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So the so the so. <coughs> okay, friends, this is the end of this today's uh, session. Let me end this session with my regular sharing metta. May all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases, may they recover very soon and return to their normal life and practice Dhamma and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those doctors, nurses, and hospital staff who dedicate their life show their compassion to heal these people, also find peace, happiness, and time to practice meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and uh, are grieving, <coughs> may they be free from grief and finally attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, and up and down. All those who are there, be well, happy, and peaceful, and attain liberation from suffering. Friends, this is very <coughs> sincere wish. Even though we don't know anyone, in east, east ten directions, but our heart must be filled with this loving, friendly thought, this metta. Have a very wonderful day, and Thank see you sir. tomorrow with questions. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you,